Hi, this is Sanjay Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Insights. We all agree that while it's easy to install Kubernetes, it's not easy to run and manage. Actually, it's not meant to be easy. I have talked to the founders and they all agree that it's not designed to, 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 to be that easy, uh, which means that the bar for entry is really high for those who want to leverage Kubernetes. And today's world, almost everybody wants to leverage Kubernetes uh, to orchestrate whatever they are doing. Uh, the adoption of Kubernetes is just going off the roof. So that's where uh, managed services, managed Kubernetes services come to the rescue of such users. Uh, recently, Linode announced its managed Kubernetes services called LKE to discuss, uh, to discuss uh, this complexity of Kubernetes and the role managed services play and why Linode created LKE, LKE in particular. We have with us Harvey Ross, Director of Engineering at Linode.com. Uh, first of all, Harvey, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bob. It's great to be here. My first question to you, Harvey, is that do you agree that Kubernetes is really uh, that hard to run and manage and even configure? It's very easy to install, but rest of the things are complicated. What, do, what are the thoughts about that? I would agree with you that Kubernetes is very complicated. I mean, it's a highly complex distributed system by its nature. And I, I think you can you know, ramp up and, and install it on, uh, on a managed cloud provider relatively easily and, and, and get started with, with some of the core concepts and get something up and running relatively quickly. But you know, it is uh, it, an, an operator's platform meant for you know, professional and potentially enterprise use. I mean, if you are running uh, you know, a simple uh, website or, or web application, um, it's, it's not gonna be necessary for, for those purposes. But at the scale that many of us are, are running and, and operating uh, applications and, and distributed systems, um, it has a lot to offer. Right, and also the adoption of Kubernetes is also uh, uh, unexpected. Uh, in most cases, it is beyond the use cases that uh, it was originally created to address. Uh, so what are, the, what are the main challenges that customers or users face when they tackle uh, Kubernetes? Your first challenge, if you're not quite already there, is going to be just containerizing your applications. And then um, from there, also moving in towards more of uh, an immutable application approach to, uh, to, to software development and, and delivery. Uh, so you, know, you, can no, you can no longer rely on uh, data persisting directly on disk in, in your application or um, rely on um, strict IP whitelisting for uh, certain security features. Uh, so you have to kind of get uh, get comfortable and get used to the new containerized and orchestrated container paradigm. So they're, they're like, you know, either you have to refactor your application and containerize it. Or are there any workarounds where you can use your existing application and somehow wrap in a container without doing too much refactoring? I mean, how, is, how to make it easier for customers to kind of easily move without doing a lot of refactoring? The services that, that Linode and many of the other cloud providers um, offer now make that much easier. And you know, if you uh, if you're if you're starting a greenfield application, you can you can take on a, a cloud native approach. Uh, but even if you have an existing application, um, you can pivot to relying on object storage for for file persistence and potentially uh, a managed database as a service uh, or uh, for your uh, for your database. Um, and, and in that way, no longer rely on uh, on local disk storage and, and persistence. The position that Linode is in is kind of unique because traditionally uh, a disclosure that I myself am a Linode user, a TFI runs on Linode infrastructure, but traditionally it was seen as, you know, one of those providers uh, where you just get, you know, uh, some resources on the cloud and you started using it. That was you no... Know, very basic, but now Linode is kind of getting into the market of you know uh, storage, uh, and then you know now Kubernetes is there, which also means that Linode is seeing use cases that uh, typically you won't see from hyperscale cloud providers because sometimes you actually don't need to go all the way to hyperscale. So talk about some of the unique uh, use cases that you are seeing where people do want to leverage Kubernetes but they also want it to be easier. So talk about some of the use cases. Sure, well, I, I think that's a pretty typical use case, especially for uh, people that, and, and, and companies that are 
um, are getting started or have applications that are kind of at that um, that middle scale, right? They're they're running um, a number of um, of services. You're running a uh, back end and front end service. You want all of the you know the observability tooling to see how your application is is running and performing. Um, so these uh, you know these applications these days have a way of kind of quickly adding on a number of services, right? You're going to want something uh, to do log aggregation and monitoring, performance monitoring, and, and and things of that nature. So you know before you know it, you're running a half a dozen, if not a dozen. Um, different services just for a, a relatively basic, uh, you know, web app or a mobile app with uh, with a backend server. That said, you may not be at uh, at the scale or, or, frankly, the you know the sophistication and um, and, and knowledge level uh, where you know one of the more complex clouds is going to be a good fit for you. Uh, you may want to be able with uh, you know a a few point and clicks, or even a you know taps on a on a mobile device, um, deploy a cluster with some really smart defaults uh, selected for you, uh, get a get a kube config, and uh, and away you go, uh, deploying your application. Now let's talk about uh, LKE. Why Linode created LKE? What what problem did you see your users were facing that you wanted to address them? It wasn't just our users, or you know it, it was our users, and we are one of them. Uh, but you know we were finding it um, you know relatively difficult at the at the time, which was you know two three years ago at this point, to even install Kubernetes um, you know kind of in a DIY roll your own fashion on on, on Linode or, or any provider where you're just installing it directly on on VMs. And yes, you can leverage um, tools like like Rancher, and we we of course had our own um, scripts to to facilitate this. Uh, but you know, it was uh, it was a relatively complex process that relied on you know scripts and and pretty extensive documentation to to get it to work. Uh, so we wanted to make it uh, simple for for us and our customers to be able to deploy and run Kubernetes uh, on Linode. The fact is that uh, there are already you mentioned Rancher and there are already a lot of players. They are they are offering managed Kubernetes. So how different is what Linode is doing in comparison to what is already there in the market. So Linode's Kubernetes offering is in line with, you know, with our mission and our approach in general, which is to make the cloud um, simple, accessible, and uh, and affordable. And I think that you'll find that Linode's Kubernetes offering is far simpler to to deploy, as I've, as I've mentioned, than uh, than some of the competitions. Uh, and then also, you know, as is the case with our, you know, just our standard. Um, compute products, it's uh, it's it's very affordable comparatively, um, and in addition, we uh, we don't charge for um, for the master uh, either. Uh, so I think it's um, it's a really attractive option um, for folks that um, are a bit more uh, cost conscious and are looking for the you know the simplicity uh, and the great support that you know that we provide. Um, you know, to even our even our smallest customers. Uh, uh, there are a couple of things. Uh, one would be performance. One would be cost. One would be simplicity or ease of use. Uh, and, and another aspect is uh, trying to offer an experience which is closest to the upstream Kubernetes uh, experience. So, which of these are critical to Linode? Uh, which also means that this is what the customers get. Uh, I would say all of the above. I mean that 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 is our our mission to uh, you know to deliver on on all the points you mentioned to, to deliver uh, great performance for the price uh, and to keep it uh, simple and um, to be there and and give a great uh, overall support and customer experience if and when uh, you need some help. Uh, if you look at Kubernetes, you know it's just one of the many pieces of. Uh, uh, moving your workloads to the cloud native world. Uh, there are so many adjacent projects that you have to leverage and work with. So when we look at LKE, is it purely just Kubernetes or you also allow customers to, because what is happening is uh, a lot of times, you know, especially in the open source world, customers mix and match a lot of different technologies. They, somebody may use Istio, somebody may use Linkerd. There are so many different components for different, you know, storage or whatever you talk about. So, uh, so is it like full stack where you come to LK and you get everything, or customers still can bring in or use whatever they have? Uh, customers can still use and and, and leverage. Whatever software and and particularly you know cloud native compatible software they would like. Um, that said, LKE relies on all of the uh, the cloud 
primitives that that Linode offers, including uh, block storage, object storage, um, and, uh, and and node balancers as well, um, and very easily, um, you know, using uh, whether it be um, you know Helm and Helm charts or uh, or Kubernetes uh, operators, you can deploy additional instances um, of those primitives. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you're 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 more than welcome to deploy any of the uh, cloud native software, um, you know. Uh, whether it be you know Istio to to create a uh, a service mesh uh, with your cluster or or, or clusters um, or, uh, or or other software as well. Now I do know that you cannot share a lot of you know uh, things that are in the pipeline for, for the future. But what I have seen you know you're offering storage, you're also offering GPU, and now the, the Kubernetes there. What else do you think that your customer needs? I mean, of course, as I said, you're not making any product announcements today, but where you feel that, hey, you know, this is what Linode should also be doing. So as I mentioned, um, you know, in addition to building LKE for our, our, our customers, of course, uh, we also built it to, you know, to scratch our own itch. We, we needed to use it uh, as well. And we intend for it to be, you know, a foundational component of, of, of things we are going to build in the future. Um, including uh, a database as a service, and then potentially, um, you know, a more maybe a more streamlined, simple um, container runtime uh, or a, uh, a functions as a service uh, system. We already uh, talked about it earlier that there are already solutions that are there, managed Kubernetes solution. Why should a user come to Linode? I think many of our many users are going to find Linode through the the great guides and, and documentation that uh, that we provide and that is reflective of the you know the overall approach and uh, and, and culture at, at Linode um, but you know where many of our customers are are, are frankly um, getting frustrated with the uh, the large public clouds and the you know the inevitable uh, customer support experience that uh, that they're going to have to uh, endure there and then also, you know, uh, we also have a number of customers whose, um, you know, cloud costs are are exploding uh, as the, you know, growth of their uh, uh, service uh, increases. Uh, so if you're looking for, you know, a simple uh, Kubernetes experience that's going to give you great performance for the price uh, and, an, and an awesome customer support experience when, uh, when you need some help, then Linode's the place for you. Thank you, Hobby, for uh, for talking to me today. Uh, not only about LKA, but also in general, uh, the 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 whole Kubernetes landscape and how it's really important, critical today, to help customers uh, leverage these technologies without having to get their hands really dirty. And I look forward to talk to you again because I'm pretty sure that Linode will be doing a lot of work in the cloud native space. Sounds good, Swapnil. It's been great speaking with you.